What's up, y'all? Namaste. White Magic Tiger here. And for all my brothers and sisters in Christ, Brother Timothy, as if, if you don't know yet, White Magic Tiger is the undercover hippie evangelist and God, Creator God, Divine Mother, Heavenly Father, has been sending me undercover into these hippie New Age communities to share the good news, the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. What does the word repent mean? Look up the etymology. I'm pretty sure it's like rem rempentare or something. And it means it turns one's mind around. So it's like everyone's mind is out here in the material world. Repent, turn your mind inwards to the spiritual realm. Repent and believe in the gospel. Well, I don't like the word believe because it has the word L-I-E in it. That's a lie. They want you to have blind faith. I, I Not just blind faith. They just want you to blindly believe. Now, I'm all about faith with open eyes. And, and so it's turn your consciousness around inwards and have faith in the gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. And what is the good news? The good news is that the kingdom of heaven is within you. Jesus Christ said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. All your desires, everything you desire in your life will be given to you if you make seeking the kingdom of heaven that's within if you seek that first matthew 6 33 seek first the kingdom of god and then everything else you desire in your life will be given unto you well that's great jesus but where's heaven is it up there is it somewhere we go when we die no luke 17 21 behold the kingdom of heaven is within you it's right here right now and Chris, I mean, Jesus does not like lazy people. He does not like lazy Christians. He does not like Christians who think they're saved by grace. Look through the Bible. Not once did he ever say you're saved by grace. That's by the false satanic apostle named Paul. Paul is an apostle of Satan and he said you're saved by grace. Are you gonna trust Paul or are you gonna trust Jesus? Jesus says you gotta work. The apostle James says you gotta work and you gotta work to seek the kingdom of heaven that's within. He says the single eyes right here. The church of God is not built by hands. The temple of God is not built by hands. Look that scripture up. The temple of God is not built by hands. What's a temple? A temple is a place of worship, just like a church, a synagogue, a mosque. So take that same scripture and replace it with the church. The church of God is not built by hands. The church is not out here in the world, y'all. This is the church. You're looking at the church right here. Your body is the church. In the book of Corinthians, it says, don't you know that your body is the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth within you? Again, replace the word temple with church. Don't you know that your body is the church of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth within you? What are these on the sides of our heads? What are those? You know. That's the temple. This is the temple. This is the temple of God. That's why we got to fast. Fast and keep this clean. Not just the outside. It's more important to clean the inside. That's why Jesus said like the it's like yeah, you can clean the outside of the temple, but it's like like it's all dusty and like, dirty on the inside. Like you got to clean the inside of the temple. And and y'all, I know I'm kind of like on a rant here and rolling. Oh man, what did I even want to say when I started this video? For, okay, I'll just say with this. The Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God, the Prince of Peace, the Good Shepherd. Out here in the world, we're all sheep. We're all sheep. In this example, we're all sheep. And I'm, I'm learning about this, but let's just say some people are goats. Well, Jesus is coming out here and he's collecting all the sheep. Nothing against goats, but just to have like a difference, like there's goats and sheep. And so y'all, after I made this video, I came across this scripture right here and it's uh, very relevant to what I'm talking about in the video. Matthew 25 verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. 
Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungred, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungred, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungred, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into, into life eternal. Y'all, in the previous scripture, it mentioned the word meat a couple times. I just want to refer to Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, and, and the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. It's pretty clearly telling us the meat should be fruit, vegetables, seeds, nuts. Really simple. The One of the commandments is thou shalt not kill. Y'all, if you're still eating chickens, cows, fish, whatever, if you're eating animals, anything, birds flying in the sky, animals on the land, fish in the water, those are all creatures of God. That, that spark of creation of the, of the creator, of the mother, father, creator, their soul is in those animals. And whether you kill them yourselves or you pay for it and you're killing them indirectly, you're, you're still responsible and that karma is on you. And it's outright breaking one of the Ten Commandments. So I just wanted to really clarify that it's it's really important to to not eat these animals. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you do you though. I'm just saying. Now you know. And Jesus, the Good Shepherd, he's going out and finding every sheep and bringing them into the safety of the barn house. And he's also using, he also has the sheepdog. He's got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, which is the Divine Mother. Uh, so the Divine Mother is going out. The Holy Spirit, the breath of life is going out. And, and that's like the sheepdog bringing all the sheep in. And Jesus is the door, the door to the barn house. And the barn house is the, is the heavenly abode of the Divine Mother, Heavenly Father, Creator, God. And Jesus is that door. And essentially... He's just going out and he's getting everyone and bringing them back in because the sun's about to set, y'all. It's literally about to go down and it's going to be nighttime. And when it's nighttime, the big bad wolf is going to come out. And you don't want to be a sheep that's like out there astray or you don't want to be one of the goats because it is not going to look pretty for them. They're not going to be under the divine protection of God. My fearlessness comes from knowing that I am protected by the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd has me in his barn house. The barn house of the Heavenly Father, Divine Mother. And I'm so grateful that Jesus Christ chose me and I chose him. He wants to choose all of us. And y'all, if you haven't prayed to Jesus Christ, use, you have free will, okay? This reality is amazing. And you have free will to do whatever you want. It's the best school ever. And if you use your free will and you ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and open up your heart and just transform your life into purity, love, joy, peace, harmony, abundance, joy, bliss, self-control, meekness, humbleness, patience, Long suffering. That's my favorite word for patience in the Bible. It's called long suffering in the King James Version. I really like that, especially when I'm meditating. It's like, thank you for, for helping me develop the patience, aka the long suffering. And it's like, okay, long suffering. 
Anyways, y'all, if you've never prayed to Jesus Christ, use your free will. I mean, do whatever you want. But, I mean, I I can almost say you won't regret it. You won't regret opening up your heart to him because he wants, he respects your free will. And he's not going to enter your life unless you ask him. It's it, it, ask and ye shall receive. And he respects your free will. He's like, he's not, he's not, he's not rude like that where he's just going to come interrupt you. And he can't do it. It's it, it, like, he, he, in this universe, it's all based on permission. It's all based on consent. You know, you don't really understand sometimes what a terrible burden it is to know some of the things that I know. And try to wake people up and impart this knowledge to them. And find out that they just have walls built in front of them. They want to be slaves. Now, I risk sounding like a conspiracy theorist. But it's no longer a theory. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one world communist government. idea that you have freedom of choice you don't you have no choice you have owners and they own all the big media companies so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear they got you by the balls they don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking 